shit! Where you going? That is a red one! I will let you eat everybody! Promise! I promise! Oh yeah! Hey there, quirky people. Today we're gonna talk about our beloved symbiote, Venom. What the hell are you? We are Venom. Looking through several symbiote names, have you ever wondered why he is so weak in Sony's universe? And what is it that makes him unique? The history of Marvel Comics has been a strange one. No one has really adhered to the roles that they were meant for. I suppose that is how it goes with written media, or with anything that goes on for long enough, really. Okay, let's play a game, shall we? Take any comic character, literally anyone you like. Its franchise and company do not matter in this choice. It could be Marvel, or DC, or from any other smaller publication. The only thing that matters is that you know this character. Now that you have chosen him or her, I want you to answer this question. How many times have the writers reimagined this character of yours? How many times has your hero been portrayed as the villain? Or the villain has been turned into a good guy? You see, subverting expectations is a trick of writing. And that's a trick as old as time itself. The idea is to cue something up and then completely circumvent it. It can work really well when executed properly. And an example of this is the ending of Infinity War. Everything the movie did was to make us believe that Thor would win. Even with his final attack on Thanos, we thought that he won. But Thanos sneaked in his snap and the universe lost. That's what made the ending so impactful. But why am I talking about all this in a video that is supposed to focus upon Venom? Well, that's because I think a lot of movie fans still don't know about expectation subversion. Okay, please, let me fix it. So I can fix it again! You are a loser. They are also not aware about the fact that Venom has shifted from being a villain to a hero, or perhaps an anti-hero, as you might want to call him. I will let you eat everybody! Promise! I promise! Oh yeah! It happened especially after the recent King in Black series of comics. The Black symbiote has some crazy feats to his name so far. He is considered to be one of the most lethal creatures in the Marvel Universe. But, we and quite a few fans think Venom is the weakest symbiote. I have decided to stay. Wow! On my planet, I am kind of a loser, like you. Now what do we mean by that? How can the hive mind controller of Clinter be the weakest symbiote? I mean, you might be confused because his recent achievements pose him as a very formidable symbiote. Well, stick around, and you might get the answers to these burning questions. First, let's look at the origins, powers, and abilities of Venom. It is known that he is an alien to the people of Earth. He has different origins in the comics with regards to how he ended up on Earth. One version had the symbiote crashing to the surface of our planet through a meteoroid. Another version had it latching on to an Earth-bound rocket. The man inside that rocket was none other than J. Jonah Jameson's son, John Jonah Jameson III. So JJJ III became the first carrier for the symbiote in many iterations of the comics. Ultimately, one way or another, the symbiote left JJJ III. The Clinter then attached itself to Peter Parker. In the comics, this happened during the Secret War storyline. So in this version, the symbiote granted Spider-Man increased strength and resilience. This is something else. But it also brought increased anger and bloodlust in Peter. Fortunately, Pete managed to rid himself of the black suit pretty soon, and Peter was able to overcome his rage as well. But right after Parker, Venom ran and fused with the nearest human. And much to everyone's surprise, this human turned out to be Eddie Brock. He was a reporter at the Daily Bugle who blamed Spider-Man for his downfall. And Venom also hated Spider-Man for rejecting him. So the two teamed up and formed a pretty strong bond. Hey, Parker. My god, Eddie! For years, Venom's sole purpose was to destroy Spider-Man. But the Clinter had very little success with his murder project. That's mainly because despite having all his strength, Venom was no match for the wits of Spider-Man. And this is what I'm talking about. Even with all his brutish strength, Venom has often failed to use his resources effectively. Maybe this is a continuous issue with the way he is written. But if you think about it, the only time he did write by his abilities was when he became a hero. So, is plot armor the greatest power to have? Well, this is not the case, my dear. The greatest power to possess is the right time and the right motivation. Oh, shit! Oh, where are you going? 
That is a red one. I will let you eat everybody. Promise. I promise. Oh, yeah. And Venom has rarely had both or either of these powers at the same time. Take the King in Black Storyline, for instance. After Null showed up, things quickly escalated. Even the Avengers were no match for the hive minds of symbiotes. The dude beheaded a celestial for Christ's sake. But somehow, out of sheer will, Venom managed to overpower the symbiote god, and that made Venom the new King in Black. He also became the controller of the hive mind of the Clinter population. Now this was surprising for a variety of reasons, and the biggest of them is, how can the weakest symbiote win against the strongest? Well, the answer to this question is, through sheer will and a little plot armor. But the story is really well crafted, and it brings out the underdog nature of Venom in the best way. And that's part of the reason why I call him the weakest symbiote. Holy shit! Told you! Most of his solo storylines focus on his battles with other symbiotes. And usually, all these symbiotes have special powers. For example, Carnage is a much more aggressive red symbiote. The red color is due to his fusion with the blood of Cletus Cassidy, and that makes Carnage much more resilient and fluidic than Venom. Venom, on the other hand, is just a common black symbiote. He always fights at a disadvantage. So what can this basic, low-level creature do against a much more evolved symbiote? Well, he can push through with vigor. And this, in essence, is who really Venom is. He is the ultimate redemption arc. But for the arc to have any significance, he has to be severely depowered. I don't think that the writers planned on doing such a thing at the beginning, since he started off as the big bad villain. But the purpose of the character changed as the story evolved. When a new symbiote like Scorn came onto the scene, who could actually control tech? Venom seemed too substandard to battle abilities like this. To battle all of his children one after the other, Venom has had to build resilience over time. He had to create new tactics out of thin air. Because for the other symbiotes, this is fun and games. But for Venom, it is a question of survival. Once again, getting on to the main question, why is Venom the weakest symbiote? Well, that's because without him, this story won't be as fun as it needs to be. Ta-da! Catch up! Excuse me. Yummy. Venom is an alluring character, but for all the terrible things he has done, we love the Black Hulking Oaf. Yes, he is a raging maniac, but he also has a softer side, and the fandom just adores that. Goodbye, Eddie. Venom, no! Over the years, his personality has changed from pure evil to mostly sinister. In the latest comics, you may even consider him to be an anti-hero rather than a straight-up villain. And part of the reason is his victory over King in Black, which, by the way, is a great story arc that we don't want to spoil. So if you haven't read it, go read it now. What are you waiting for, really? After this arc, Venom was even offered a place among the Avengers, and you'd be surprised to know that he accepted the offer for a short while. It happened before Carnage and the symbiote hive mind went crazy again. It's a great follow-up comic which I'd recommend 100%. But that is how it goes with Venom. The character is supposed to be weaker than his spawn. He's supposed to be tactful. His basic design and almost generic symbiote powers exist only to serve one purpose, which is to give him the least amount of advantage. Now don't get us wrong, Venom in no way is weak in a fight. It's his powers that are weaker in comparison to everyone else in his league. Sure, there are some weak symbiotes too, but Venom truly punches above his weight and that's just commendable. He's the Spider-Man of the villain world. With his evolved sense of compassion, he fights the good fight. Well, at least his version of the good fight and that is one of the main reasons he is so popular with fans. We think that the capacity for Venom's evolution is specific to him. This may be because he is the only true Clinter on Earth. Every other symbiote was born here and unwittingly have some Earth in them. This makes Venom the weakest, but it also makes him utterly unique compared to the ones like Carnage or Toxin. He is able to accomplish things that no one else can. Moreover, his time with Spider-Man has imbued him with his own power, which is the power of improvision. It has allowed him to be unpredictable, to be powerful, decisive, and precise. That truly is Venom's greatest power among all his symbiote abilities, and it's crazy that he inherited this from his arch nemesis. Not to mention his capacity for learning, which has saved the symbiote time and again. What do you think of our analysis of the character? Do you think we've hit the nail on its head? Is he the weakest, or does he have the capacity to be the strongest? Let us know in the comment section. And if you liked this one, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. 
Okay, that's all for now. Goodbye.